In season one of NBA 2K22, I was level 40 on both next gen and current gen. On 2K21, I was a legend on current gen and next gen. In 2K20, I was a legend. In 2K19, I was a 99 overall. So if anybody knows how to level up and rep up fast in 2K, it's me. So in this video, I'm gonna break down and tell you all the secrets of how you too can rep up in the fastest way possible. Every single thing you're gonna need to do. Print it so much detail into this video. Drop a like if you appreciate it, but let's get into it. Yo, what's up guys, it's Power DF, back with another video. As I said, if you guys don't know me, I've been a top rep in many, many 2Ks. I'm a level 40 in season one on both next gen and current gen. So going into season two and the next seasons, I want to help people rep up and level up the fastest they can because what I can tell you about this year, it's truly possible for anybody to hit level 40. You only play on weekends, you can hit level 40. You work 40, 60 hours a week, you can hit level 40. You got school every day, you got after school practice, you can still hit level 40. But the problem is a lot of people aren't repping up and they aren't leveling up in the correct way and using all the techniques. So I'm going to give you guys all the secrets right here for both current gen and next gen. I'm going to break in the exceptions. I'm going to put the timestamps below. We're going to start with current gen and I'm just going to quickly own everything you guys really need to know. Number one, you need to know when you level up, um, what you're going to unlock is literally um, XP tokens along the way. If you, what happens is when you're getting games or you're playing really well with your good teammate, make sure you're activating these XP tokens. You see, I saved it right here um, because I wanted to see if it carries over to the season, but they said it did not. But you, you want to activate these. If you really want to wrap up and you don't have much time, whenever you whenever you own and you're playing with a really good teammate make sure you're activating these xp tokens because that can just help out so much next thing you want to do is I, this should be obvious uh, i'm saying some obvious stuff right here guys because i want to know like some people don't know you'd be surprised about people that don't know like the basic stuff so i want to make sure even the basic stuff that people aren't doing people know go in the elevator right here if you go to the the game room um right here is a game room you can do your daily spin make sure you do your daily spin every single day so you can try to get two edge rep. If you gotta be, if you want rep, you gotta be serious about that. Even just get on sometime and see if you get two edge rep. If you don't get it, then maybe just get off. But if you get it, then maybe you can like utilize it. So that's so key trying for two edge rep. Another big thing before I get into the methods, because I want to show you guys the exact method and we're gonna show you guys some gameplay. But another huge thing is these events right here, guys. Um, I know this sounds so obvious again, guys, but. If you're just going out here and you're playing single rep, you're never going to compete or rep up as fast as people playing these um, extra rep events. So, for example, Dunk Fest, that's going to be two Fs. Specialist Appreciation, that's two Fs and three Fs, depending on your shooting badges. If you're serious about gaining rep, every single time they have one of these events, you need to like try to play doing these. You can't just hop on doing single rep and expect to get your rep fast. So, make sure you're taking advantage of your two Fs, three Fs rep opportunities are usually during the weekends, so it's good for everybody to use. Okay, so now what we're going to get into, I'm going to show you guys kind of like the rep system and we're going to break down exactly the map that you should use while playing the game. What also might be helpful to a lot of people is if a lot of people on current gen, they don't get games. Um, that's, that's usually not a problem as much, but on current gen, look, there's six 2v2 courts, there's six 3v3 courts. If you have trouble like just getting games, what I recommend if you want to wrap up fast is a couple things. Um... Number one, get three friends. Try to make a program team. If you make a program team, you can go to program 33 and you can get instant games like every single time. And then you don't have to wait. Number two, what you can do is you can go down here to the lobby and you can go to the rec center. The rec center is so good. If you have a set squad and you're throwing lobs and you're doing the same methods I'm using and you're doing it in rec or program, it doesn't matter. Um, then that's going to be so key for you wrapping up like if you have a good rec squad and you're catching lobs or throwing lobs in rec with the longer games you're wrap up so fast and it's also instant game so rec and program is an important tool for people if you're struggling to get games but if you're chill or you get games or you don't mind core hopping a little bit you can still play park this is just for people if you're like oh my god well i would love to do this but i can't get games then make sure you're utilizing the rec and the program all right guys so the key thing right here for current gen is the current gen rep system is based completely off my points it's a thing called my points if you ever want to check how many my points you get um you can go to the end of the game when you're at the end of the game press y 
um, when it's in like the loading rep screen and it'll show you how many my points you gained in that game and the more my points the more rep you're gonna get that's simple how it works but what people don't understand is what kind of actions are gonna give you my points and then what kind of builds contribute to it if you're serious and you want to gain the most amount of rep you need play making your pie chart or finishing just because those are gonna maximize the actions that give you rep so for my points catching lobs gives you so many rep whether it's a layup or a dunk a dunk is gonna give you more but catching lobs is gonna give you a ton of rep um throwing a flashy pass is gonna get you um a lot of rep for if you're a passer and you're a playmaker in your pie chart throwing lobs so the main method people use is throwing lobs and catching lobs and i'm going to demonstrate how to do it in like a game um but like i said you won't want playmaking or finishing in your pie chart if you're another archetype you can still do these things it's just it's not going to work as fast this is how this game works if you're not a certain build you're just not going to wrap up as fast so the ideal for a guard if you want to wrap up fast is probably like a play shot a yellow green shooting playmaking and the reason for that is it has the playmaking but it's better than a pure yellow because a lot of times when you try to throw lobs or throw a lot of assists they start packing the paint and they leave you wide open so if you can shoot too now you're getting my points when you shoot wide open and you're getting my points for those lobs so you're getting a combination so that's going to be key um for playmaking now for if anybody catching lobs you want finishing in your pie chart at least the more finish you have you're all blue that's going to be really really good but a lot of people try to, try to do like a blue green and then that way if they pack the paint you can shoot two and mix it up but if you just catch a ton of lobs in that you will get so much um xp so i'm i have some games here that I demonstrate kind of like the method you want to do basically there's a, there's a play you can do where you're in down inbound the ball where the person can catch it like behind them and then they can throw a lob um and you run around the person and you throw a lob to that person that's a good way to catch it just doing a pick and roll and throwing the lob off the pick and roll is a good way to get the lobs in a lot of times you'll see people stand in the paint if they stand in the paint what i like to do is sometimes you play someone can shoot and catch lobs you can do a little flashy and everybody can kind of shoot in this game to be honest you can do a little flashy and they can shoot like a quick three-pointer the key thing you want to go for in a current game is if you're a guard you want to get six lobs and just shoot three threes to get the maximum amount of rep. That's the maximum amount of rep. Now, if it's a tough game or they're overplaying it, then sometimes you just gotta end the game, to be honest with you, and take what you can get. But that's how you're gonna get the maximum amount of rep. You can also get extra rep doing things like, if you're playing good people, people don't know this because people always be running for good people. If you see a level 40, a level 39, especially if they're not that good, it gives you huge opponent strength by playing these high levels. So you're just gonna get extra, um, extra XP by just playing these people which is crazy so you can see when when i played i'm getting high xp amounts by literally just throwing the lobs to them they catch it and every time they leave me wide open just shooting the occasional shot so it's really simple they, they're going to try to pick on to it and try to try to jump it so that's why you want to mix it up you don't want to throw the lob every time you don't want to and if it's not there, don't force it. That's what a lot of mistakes people make is they try to like they make the games take too long because they force it. It's okay to get a little bit less rep in order to end the game a little bit faster. So I think that's a really key thing to know. And if you do that, you're gonna be wrapping up so fast on current gen. That's really all there is to it. Throwing lobs, catching lobs, flashy passes. That's every that's what everybody does. If you do those three things, it's a simplified and you hark the double rep events, then you will guaranteed. Be a high rapid current gen. So um, that's all for current gen. We're gonna go to next gen next. All right, guys. So moving on to next gen, I want to break down like how rep it works in next gen because it's totally different from current gen and the kind of differences. Now, once again, you want to go over the basic stuff. Like I said, playing the events. If you're not playing the events, make sure you're taking advantage of every single double rep event. Um, make sure to think like Puma, you're playing. But on next gen, a key thing on current gen, when your build actually matters. If you have a certain type of build, you just might not be able to rep up. On next gen, your build doesn't matter. No matter what build you are, you can rep up pretty much the same as long as you do the right type of things. So what next gen rep mainly goes off of is teammate grade. Um, how are you gonna now wins and wins wins are important too. So on current gen, another thing, you can kind of lose as long as you get in on current gen, as long as you get in your like lobs. You're gonna get rep on current gen. On next gen, if you lose, you're getting no rep. So you have to make sure you win these games. Like I don't care if you get an A or A plus teammate grade. If you lose the game, you're gonna get no rep. So keep that in mind. It's teammate grade, and it's 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 winning too. So the the key way to get teammate grades. What helps teammate grades is okay. 
pretty much like everything you do. So setting a screen and they somebody scores off it, that's teammate grade. You green a shot, that's teammate grade. You score off assists, that's teammate grade. Um, you assist, that's teammate grade. That's rebound, that's teammate grade. So it's everything, but things also hurt teammate grade. So for example, on current gen, you throw lobs. And if if somebody like intercepts and you throw turnovers, that's okay. It's not gonna take down your my points. It will hurt your teammate grade. So the important thing on next gen that you gotta remember is don't make mistakes because that's gonna ruin your teammate grade. You don't wanna get the ball stolen from you. You don't wanna get any kind of turnover because that's gonna just, that just destroys teammate grade. And you don't wanna play bad defense. If you're still getting dropped off, you're gonna allow your, it's gonna say you allow man to score. And basically you're just gonna get destroyed on teammate grade. So key things you don't wanna allow and don't, for a teammate grade is don't allow your man to score as much as you can now one to two scores is not bad but don't get dropped off <laughs> as a self-explanatory and two don't get turnovers so don't force baskets or anything like that so my kind of method for next gen and getting rep is i really just pass the ball you know so well the key is i try to make every single basket an assisted basket and if every single basket is somebody's passing to someone else usually you're going to go out there with like an a minus or a and you shouldn't try to get a plus every time because sometimes if you try to force the a plus you just end up making the game take so long it's not worth it it's worth, worth it for me at least in my experience you can get an a minus and end that game in three minutes rather than you get an a plus and it takes double the time so well, as you can see here, I'm just passing it around. You just want to, it doesn't have to be a shot. Now, it doesn't matter if you're the shooter or the passer. That's what people don't understand. If you shoot, now you're going to get more if you green your shots. If you get green your shots, it increases your teammate grade by a lot. But you just want to pass it to the person. Both the shooter is going to get it. They're going to get score to assist, and they're going to get an extra if they green. And the passer is going to get an extra teammate grade for assist in the basket. So you just do assist generally, assist for the three-point line. You do some assist um to dunk the ball it's just every single basket you want to run around and make sure to your assist now this doesn't work and gets good people if you're playing really comp people and they're just not allowing you to get your assist in what you got to do sometimes is just take your points and just dunk but you never really want to take a point that's not assisted by somebody so uh, an example of now if, you, if you're only caring about teammate grade for yourself it's different like if you're a center and you set the screen and your guard is scoring then that's really good teammate grade for you, but it's not gonna be good teammate grade for the guard. You don't wanna, a lot of times in next gen, what people mess up on is they try to score too much and go off too crazy, and they don't realize they're not getting teammate grade. So if you ball hog on next gen, and let's say you're just coming off the screen every single time, and you're taking layups, or you're rim running, if you're rim running, you get no teammate grade, I promise you. If you run to the basket and dunk every time, that's no teammate grade. If you're just coming off the screen, then you're not gonna really get that much teammate grade. If you set the screens and rebound, that's why centers generally just get a higher teammate grade because just by setting screens and rebound, you're going to get a pretty good teammate grade. But you want to get in those assists. If you want both the guard, because I've played with people and people are like, okay, how does your guard have really high teammate grade too? If you want the guard and the center to both have high teammate grades, you just want to pass it every single possession, whether it's a dunk, whether it's a shot, just get in those assists and limit your mistakes. And modes matter too. So twos is the best. Now for like... Current gen, it really doesn't matter if you play twos, threes, you can play rack, anything. For next gen, twos is really the best with this. On threes, it becomes harder because there's some spaces. Now the center and the guard can kind of get it, but not everybody on the team can get the assist. So somebody on the threes usually just has a bad teammate grade. So it's really hard for everybody on threes to have a good teammate grade. That's why if you want to wrap up the fastest, play twos in this game or play rack. Rack is a cheat code for teammate grade um, in next gen, guys, because you can get an A plus every single time in rack. So as long as you're winning your rec games, if you really want to wrap up the fastest, go to rec, have a good rec squad, and just get an A or A plus every single game. Like that's a, a key way. It's the same thing with just assisting, rebounding, and doing the passes, but um, it's just in rec. So that's why I recommend rec 2v2 for next gen and just pass the ball around and get your assists. All right, guys, that's going to conclude the video, man. I appreciate all you guys for watching. If you got any questions about how to wrap up a level up or I left something out, leave in the comment section below. I'll be happy to answer it. And I hope I helped you guys kind of get a better understanding of how to wrap up, how to level up, all the methods and keys that I use, and just like the best way to do it. So 
I appreciate you guys. Yo. Don't forget to Yo. like and subscribe, and I am out. It's funny how now she be calling me back. She see that I got it, I'm stuck in the trap. 40 autos, let me put it right back. 40 autos, and he left in the back. I can't be trusting because people just act. I get the money, I run it right back.